Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Your Money or Your Life, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If you're on a spot where a step forward drags you two steps back, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, I'm taking for granted this is confidential, so here goes. A couple of days ago, I got so desperate, I stole to get some dough to pay off a debt. What I want most is to see the guy I borrowed from get what's coming to him for running a racket that smells to high heaven. Maybe you heard of him. His name is Douglas Harger, and I want to see something happen to him. If this hits you right, you've got a job. The only time I can talk to you is between 12 and 1 at Molly's Cafe on Pierpont Street. Sign, Fred Dundee. <laughs> Give it a look, Fred. Don't you see I can't play ball with you? Why not? You'll be getting paid for it. Well, I can't take that kind of money. Who did you steal it from? That's my business, Miss Brooks. And if you're worried about me making it my life's work, forget it. It was my first and last time. I know, Fred. And I'd like to help you, but... Oh, sure, sure. All a chili, Mike. I suppose that's what you fellas call ethics, huh, Valentine? Well, I... But it's all right for Harger to make all the dirty money he wants without anybody saying a word. How can you be so sure it's Harger who's running this loan shark business? I borrowed that money from Phil Pagano. He's always going in and out of Harger's Melody Club. He works for him. Yeah? You should hear his line. Go on, kid. Your credit is good. If the wife's going to have a baby, let her have the best. Huh? You got a whole month to pay back the two fifty. Of course, there'll be a hundred dollar service charge, but then we don't ask for no security, which you don't have. I tell you, I can. Hold it, Fred. Take it easy. I know you think I was a schnook to take his money, but I wanted Peg to have everything good when she was having the kid. I couldn't borrow anywhere else because I'm in hock up to my ears now. But think of the chance you were taking when you decided to steal. Don't I know? But they wouldn't give me any more time. They didn't just threaten me. They, they said things that happened to Peg if I didn't raise the dough. Uh-huh. You know, there may be an answer to this. There's got to be, Valentine. It's not just myself. Think of all the other people who get squeezed and do things they never would have done to pay Harger back. That's why I couldn't just pay up and forget it. I want... I know, I know. You want something to happen to him. All right, tell you what, Fred. What? I'll take the job and see what I can do. Well, that's swell. There's a little money left. I'll give no, you... No, a... Fred, no. You just make sure you hold on to that. Now I'm working for free. Well, good to see you again, Mr. Valentine. The Melody Club doesn't have many interesting visitors during the day. Come off it, Harger. And tell this muscle head to get off the couch and get out of here. I want to talk to you alone. Did I hear you call you me You should a... be more careful in your choice of words, Mr. Valentine. This gentleman is supposed to be my bodyguard. Although you'd hardly tell it to see him lying around reading comic books. Come on, boss. Tear up your come outside. Let go of me. Put I'm... the gun away, Marty. We don't want to give our guest the wrong impression. You'd better go sit at the bar and soothe your chagrin. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Well, Mr. Valentine... You are as friendly as ground glass today. Never mind the patter. I want $350 from you, and I want it now. Oh, a little strapped, huh? Well, I think you're a good risk. Glad to oblige. Oh, no, you got me wrong. I'm not borrowing it. You're giving it to me. For keeps. Oh, come now. Just as you have your principles, I have mine. I'm a businessman. I never give anything unless it's for value received. Yeah, well, you're going to make an exception. This is for someone who got hurt on one of your loan shark deals. What are you talking about? Your boy, Phil Pagano, bore down so hard on a friend of mine, he had to go out and steal. Now, this is to square things for him. <laughs> Ridiculous. If out of the goodness of his heart, someone I know lends money and collects it in his own way, that has nothing to do with me. 350 bucks, Harger. Let's have it. I could have you thrown out. Well, why don't you? You know how violence unnerves me, Mr. Valentine. 
But as long as the sum is so paltry, I'll let you play Santa Claus. <laughs> if you had a conscience, Hager, I might be tempted to say it should feel better. Uh, here you are. Oh, may I ask, is this a single commission for a client, or do you have more quixotic and ambitious plans in the same direction? Why do you ask? Just curiosity? No, no, no. I just want to be prepared. As much as I despise any form of physical conflict, Mr. Valentine, I may be forced to make another exception to my principles. <laughs> Valentine, you may not have noticed, but the word on the door says homicide. Don't come to me about loan sharks. Riley, how can Harger operate a racket like this without your worthy colleagues putting the arm on You him? say it's Harger. I suspect it's Harger. It might well be Harger, but when we pick up one of those strong-arm bankers, he says it's a personal deal. Yeah? There's nothing in writing. The victims are too scared to say anything, and there's no mention of Harger. Now, go ahead. You arrest somebody. Lieutenant, you should have talked to Fred Dundee. <sighs> Look, Miss Brooks, we don't like the idea either, seeing the little people in this city being pushed around. A question, Lieutenant. One simple question. Oh, I know your simple questions. They take till doomsday to answer. Well, wouldn't you say it'd take a lot of cold, hard cash to supply what you call these strong-arm bankers? Uh, there must be dozens of them covering the city. And they're ready to lend dough right on the line. You just name the amount. What are you driving at? Hager isn't headed for the poorhouse, but neither does he get his mail in care of Fort Knox. And he has so many other interests that take cash to run. Christopher Arena, his nightclubs, and all the rest of yeah, them. Yeah, in other words, somebody else has to be furnishing the wherewithal, the financier, the angel. Now, have you ever heard of anyone connected with him who could even vaguely fit that description? Not even vaguely. Oh, great. Well, there's nothing like being a pioneer and trying to find the answer to my own question. There's Pagano in there at the bar, Valentine. Yeah, I see him, Fred. He always hangs out here at Maloney's, 8 to 12 every night. So any sucker like me who wants money, I know where to find him. I think I can charm him out so you can talk to him alone, George. Or do I sound like I'm confusing myself with Betty Grace? Oh, he'll fall for you like a ton of bricks. He thinks he's a ladies' man, Miss Brooks. But you be careful of him. He's an oily little rat who carries a knife. A knife, huh? Hey, look, Angel, uh, maybe we ought to forget this. Look, I'll find another way to get you. Hey, Brooksy, what? Stop dead, mister. I've got an appointment with a gentleman. What can I get you, lady? Oh, nothing, thanks. Oh, hey, sweetheart. I'm good fit around here. And when they come like you, I can do better than that. Much better. No, I, uh, um, I only wanted to talk to you alone. Oh? Yeah. I need money. Need it real bad. Why me? Oh, names get around, you hear things. Somebody said I'd find you here. What well, seems to be your trouble, sweetheart? Probably nothing new to you. The show I was dancing in folded up. I held out as long as I could, and now I've got to borrow money. What's your name? What show? Vivian Dupre did a solo in Gals Can Be Pals, the Morrison Circuit. Your real name, I mean, Mr. Prey. Okay. Mary Sullivan. Do I get the money? I'll pay it back. Usually I work regular. All right. Don't get so nervous, Mary. Bill Pagano will take care of you. Uh, how much do you call money? Well, I'm afraid it's got to be at least 300. <laughs> Bill Pagano can still take care of you. Oh. And he's happy to. Oh, when can I have it? What do I have to sign, Mr. Pagano? Well, this is no joint to talk about something personal, sweetheart. Suppose we go over to my place and set up the deal. Well, I... I don't and know. I... You trust me, don't you, kid? Oh, you know I do, Mr. Pagano. <laughs> what are we waiting for? Ah, here we are, sweetheart. Where do I get my key? Y yeah. The way you're looking around, you think he was expecting somebody. Oh, no. No, it's just that, well, the hall is so dark. Well, take care of that right now. Uh, Go ahead in, Mary. Oh, no, you first. Uh, I don't know who you are, bud, but I'm going to... Shut up. And you, babe, sit down over there. What? Oh. oh. Yes, sir. 
copper? We'll talk when you take your hand off that knife in your pocket. Ah, oh, so you heard about me, huh? Well, then you ought to know I let this knife do my talking for me. Now, wait a minute. Listen to me, handsome. Haga sent me to see you. Huh? You're lying. Yeah, I started working for him today. It seems he lost his respect for Marty as a bodyguard. You think I'm going to believe that? Haga says you've been charging extra interest on loans and holding out on him. You've shaken his faith in mankind, Phil. I never held out a cent in my life. Now snap that knife closed. I want to have nice things to report about you. Well, that's a good boy. Before we do any talking, what about the babe here? Oh, well, I wouldn't want her to miss this for anything. Oh! Oh! All right. You're working for Hage. But I want to know more than that. Hey, get, get off me. Take, take your knee out of my chest. Now, who finances the setup? Who's the top oh. man on the totem pole? I, I don't know. I don't know nothing. Hey, you, oh, don't. Who really runs the racket? Supplies are ready, cash. Come on, talk. All right. I'll, all right. Uh, I'll tell you. Stop it. Yeah. Leslie. Leslie who? Leslie Ramson. Uh, Compton Hills. Okay. Thanks, Phil. You've been very helpful. I don't want to no. seem ungrateful, but I got to do this. Oh! Sweet dreams, handsome. Well, what do I do? Cheer or just fold up like an accordion? Sorry I had to expose you to that bit of rough stuff, Angel. But even if it takes more of the same, I'm going to clean this thing up. Compton Hills? But there's nothing out there but fashionable estates. Yeah, I know. But that's the next stop, Brooksy. We're getting up in the world. Leslie will be down in just a moment, Mr. Valentine. In the meantime, would you like to step in here and see some of my books? Huh? Oh, I, uh, sure, all right. Uh, may, uh, may I get you a drink? Uh, I'd ring for one of the servants, but it's their night off. No, 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 thanks. Did you mention it was important? Yes, yes, I told Leslie. You know, Mr. Valentine, I suppose most people would say that my life is an unpardonable waste. So much of it given to collecting books, living with them. But then, what is important, young man? In college, they drum me out of my philosophy class, Mr. Remsen. Now, would you mind calling upstairs again and that see if... That won't be necessary. Oh, uh, Mr. Valentine, uh, have you met my wife? Huh? Leslie, dear, this is the young man who has been waiting for you. You're... I mean... Oh. Yes. I'm Leslie. I'm sorry I'm not wearing a mustache. I understand you have some business you want to discuss with me, Mr. Valentine. Well, uh, yes. Uh, why don't you two stay right here in the library? Thank you, Paul. I have to phone my book dealer anyway. You know, Mr. Valentine, Leslie just can't understand my passionate interest in books. No? But uh, then again, I'm often baffled by her interests. Even though I understand them. Well, good night. I received a very enlightening telephone call while you were waiting, Mr. Valentine. Then you ought to know why I'm here, Leslie. Or uh, I suppose I ought to start calling you Mrs. Remsen. No. No, I like Leslie better. You seem to think I'm masterminding some sort of minor crime wave. Aren't you? <laughs> that was a melodramatic way of putting it. The question is, what are you going to do about it? We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Did you know that in the early 30s, the oil industry had to meet the challenge of new, high-powered cars? A plain mineral oil just couldn't lubricate the new, powerful engines properly. Engineers at Standard of California met the problem with compounded RPM motor oil, the oil that won't run away from internal engine hot spots, that keeps a protective film on all parts when a car is standing cold, and that cleans your engine as it lubricates. One motorist quick to see the advantages of RPM motor oil is F.B. Stormont of Tombstone, Arizona. Mr. Stormont started using RPM in 1936. He states that he has been a constant user of this premium motor oil for the past 13 years. He's driven the same car all these years, driven it close to 100,000 miles, with only one major overhaul job in all that distance. Well, that's really protection you can trust. 
And to give your own car this superior protection, stick to RPM motor oil. Ask for RPM at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You're not surprised to find a hard-bitten operator like Douglas Harger mixed up in the loan shark racket that has victimized your client. You're not surprised when you run into assorted forms of mayhem. What does rock you back on your heels is that the beautiful and wealthy Mrs. Leslie Remsen is apparently the banker and kingpin. But if you have George Valentine's recuperative powers, you counter with a surprise of your own. Now, Leslie, what does Harger have on you? I could see my husband took an immediate liking to you. I can't say I blame him, George. Okay, be evasive. I'll do the talking. I don't mind listening. He has to be blackmailing you one way or another. You wouldn't get mixed up in a filthy deal like this if you weren't forced into it. It can't be the money. Maybe I just like the excitement. You know what this shuffle means in human misery. Maybe I'm a psychopathic case. Oh. Well, maybe it's as simple as this. <laughs> it's almost worth being an arch criminal. To be kissed like that. Uh-huh. That's all it is, Leslie. You've got a low melting point. Well, the kiss was worth the slap. But it is the truth, isn't it? Leave me alone. A beautiful woman married to a man years older. That could be dynamite. Now, what was it? Letters you wrote to somebody? Is that what Harker's holding over you? Yes. They were quite inflammatory. In fact, I remember them more vividly than the man I wrote them Then you'd to. better find a way to get them back, sister, or you're a gone gosling. No one can prove anything, not even you. I beat it out of one of Harger's mugs, and the police can too. The point is, there will never be any mention of Harger, only you. He'll make like he never heard of you before in his life. How did I get into this? George, you've got to get those letters back for me. Now you're frightened, aren't you? You can have whatever it's worth to you. Money, anything. No promises, Leslie. But I'll give it a whirl. I'll live up to my end of the bargain. You won't have to. It's all part of services rendered for another client. And a lot of other people like him. Now, look, Fred, I've got an idea. A way to take all the pep out of Harker. And if it works, what happened to you and Peg won't ever happen to anyone else. Let me have it. I'll do anything. I've got to get some letters out of Harker's safe at the Melody Club. Huh? Letters signed Leslie Remsen. <laughs> I don't know much about blowing safes. Now, I could try to scare him into giving them to me at the point of a gun, but he knows it wouldn't shoot him. Yeah? But, and this is where you come in. If someone with a nervous trigger finger and a man-sized grudge walked in... Hager would really sweat. I see what you're driving at. Sure, sure. You put on an act. You don't like the way you were taken for a ride. You're going to get even. You want him to open the office safe so you can help yourself. I'll put on an act that could get me a Hollywood contract. Now, Fred, you know there's a risk involved. But we've got to have those letters. You've got them. But there's just one thing. What's that? That gorilla, Marty. He's always following Hager around. He never lets him out of his sight. Okay, okay, that's my job. I'll get Marty off the scene. At 9.30 tonight, Harger will be alone at the Melody Club. That's when you walk in. Pick up Marty Harris for questioning. That's right, Lieutenant, and keep him under wraps overnight. What am I supposed to sweat out of him? I want him out of the way, Riley. It's important. I suppose it would be rude of me to ask why, huh? Oh, not rude. I, I just don't want to bother you. Huh? <laughs> Since when? <laughs> Don't you remember, Lieutenant? This isn't in your department. George, down the alley. There's Fred now. Yeah, good. Hop in, Fred. Well, it's, well they're all right here. Have any trouble? <laughs> Just trying to act nervous. I had to slow cargo to give me time to get out. That must have thrilled you no end. Drive around the block, Angel. Well, I don't want to sound faint-hearted, but wouldn't it be a good idea to put some distance between us and the Melody Club? Drop me off at that cab stand on you, Fred. Yeah? Beat it home to Peggy. You did a good night's work. Well, I'll take a bow when it pays off. 
I hate to think I'm just supposed to keep driving around the block. Park, just before you get to the entrance of the club, Brooksy. I got a hunch Harger's going to come streaking out of there in a few minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Now, you stick on his trail. I got to know where he goes. You can call me at Leslie Remsen's. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine, but you just missed Leslie. Oh. She seemed rather in a hurry, too. Well, do you know where your wife went, Mr. Remsen? Well, let's see. It, uh, it could be the Dauphin Room, the El Dorado, Antoine's, or possibly Le Coq d'Or. Hmm. For a bibliophile, you know your night spots. As a husband, I know my weak spots. Not being able to keep up a hectic social pace, I try to substitute patience and a modicum of wisdom that comes with the years. Meaning just what, Mr. Remsen? Let's not spar. Meaning all things come to him who waits. I'm quite able and willing to wait for Leslie. Hmm. You're okay, Remsen. All right, I'll kick around those spots you mentioned and see if I can find Leslie. Oh, just a moment, Valentine. You probably think it's strange I never questioned you about, about your business with my wife. Well, I... Of course, I uh, have sensed that she's in some kind of trouble. I'll, I'll even venture to say that you're here to deliver that little package. Huh? Would they be ill-advised letters... Leslie's very impulsive. Well, uh, as a matter of fact... Don't be embarrassed. I'm not going to ask to see them. They don't matter. It was foolish of her to get in trouble because of them. Mr. Remsen, why are you telling me this? Because I know you're trying to help her. That being the case, you ought to know how I feel. Oh, pardon me. Hello. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, he's right here. It's for you. It's a Miss Brooks. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Brooksy? Uh Uh-huh. Both of them, huh? He met her there, the Gramercy room. No, use your head, Angel. No matter how many of Hager's men are staking out the place, I gotta do this alone. Okay, I'll be right there. You must think I'm a fool, Douglas. You have no choice but to sign it, Leslie. You never asked me to sign receipts for money from any of your collectors before. (laughs) I've decided we should be more businesslike. Yes, and to avoid any stigma of blackmail, I'm going to let you have your letters back. Well, what's this gentleman trying to sell you now, Leslie? George. Sorry, we can't ask you to sit down, Mr. Valentine. Why, thanks, I will. (laughs) A business conference? George, Douglas said that if I sign these receipts... He'd let me have my letters back. Letters? What letters? Have you any letters belonging to the Lady Hager? I made a mistake some time ago not teaching you to keep out of my affairs. I never make the same mistake twice, Mr. Valentine. (laughs) You know, I wouldn't be surprised if these were the letters you meant. George, you did get them. Uh Uh-huh. So, that's why you wanted me to sign these, Douglas. You had to find some other way to keep me under your thumb. Nice try, Hager. You don't think you're going to keep those letters very long, do you? Oh, I know you've got your private goon squad sprinkled around. It seems quite a shame that my long-cherished principle of non-violence should go overboard this way. I'll take them, George. They won't dare touch me. Uh -uh, uh Uh-uh, uh-uh. Take it easy. Buster's playmates don't know the meaning of the word chivalry. You're a realist, Mr. Valentine. I admire that in a man. Why, Georgie, what a lovely surprise. What? The most wonderful thing just Look, happened. Brooksy, why didn't you well, do as I told you? Well, 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 fancy seeing you here. And as I live and breathe, my old friend Douglas Harger. Good evening, Lieutenant. It's a funny <laughs> thing, George, how I ran into Lieutenant Riley. You know there's a big policeman's ball tonight. There's a big... No, I, I didn't. Oh, uh, oh, uh, sort of a spur of the moment affair, you know. Yes, and he wants us to come along as his guest, darling. Uh-huh. He's even got a squad car outside. A squad car? Yes, sir. Oh, swell. You'll join us, won't you, Leslie? Uh, yes, I'll be happy to. We'll be with you in a minute. Well, don't be long now. We'll wait for them at the bar. Why, you bet we will. <laughs> um, you wouldn't care to go to the policeman's ball, would you, Hugger? I'm afraid I shouldn't be very good company. You know, Valentine, I relish having you as my private nemesis. If it weren't for you, my life would be much too pallid and uncomplicated. I look forward to our next meeting. Good night. Yeah. 
I won't forget what you've done for me, George. May I have those letters now? No, Leslie. Find his keepers. What? Yep. I think I'll just hold on to them now. Oh, incidentally, your husband is waiting for you. You know, I do a lot to keep Paul from getting hurt. He's a very nice guy. Wait a minute. Hmm? Oh, I get it. Blackmail. With a good housekeeping stamp of approval. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, George, before you burn those letters, you might at least have let me peek at one of them. <laughs> you know, that's what I like about you, Angel. You're so unscrupulously feminine. Yeah, but seriously, George... Do you think Leslie and her husband will make a go of it now? Oh, maybe. As long as she thinks I still have the letters, she doesn't suspect that Paul knows about them. Darling, you should run a column of advice to the Lovelorn. Dear editor, my young man, who shall be nameless, keeps putting off popping the question, what shall I do? Signed, Anxious. Oh, I get it. Dear Anxious, after seeing your beautiful pictures, I'm convinced your young man is a half-wit. By no means, marry him. Insanity is hereditary. Oh, you can't win. If your car's battery begins to act a bit feeble toward the end of winter months, nobody's surprised. For the extra use of lights and short, stormy weather trips are an added load on battery juice. But one way you can be sure of giving your battery longer life is by using Chevron Supreme gasoline. This premium quality fuel puts command performance in your car. Fast starts with little or no drain on your car's battery. Smooth acceleration, extra power, high octane power that makes it great on hills. And it's a battery saver wherever you drive in the West because it's climate tailored. That means fast starts for your car in each different altitude and temperature zone. So for economy and for all-round command performance from your car, be sure to say Chevron Supreme Gasoline. Ask for it at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. In the course of next week's adventure, we find George Valentine in a cheap rooming house. Okay, Walt. I never play AC Ducey with a 38. And now you're being smart. Well, I see you've been packing. Yeah. Leaving town. All in a kind of that crazy bottle. I shouldn't, I should have thrown it down a sewer, but no, I gotta go be nice to somebody, a guy I never seen before. Who gave you the bottle, Walt? And why? You're getting nothing out of me, mister. Nothing but this. Oh! That crazy bottle. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Tonight's story was written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Larry Dobkin as Harger, Gene Bates as Leslie, Ted Von Elts as Paul, Don Diamond as Fred, and Eddie Marr as Pagano. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>